Book 10 The Book of the Double Twilight Canto 4 The Dream Twilight of the Earthly Real There came a slope that slowly downward sank. It slipped towards a stumbling grey descent. The dim heart marvel of the ideal was lost. Its crowding wonder of bright, delicate dreams and vague, half-limbed sublimities she had left. Thought fell towards lower levels, hard and tense, it passion for some crude reality. The twilight floated still, but changed its hues and heavily swathed a less delightful dream. It settled in tired masses on the air. Its symbol colors tuned with duller reds and almost seemed a lurid mist of day. A straining thought and dire besieged her heart. Heavy her sense grew with a dangerous load and sadder greater sounds were in her ears. And through stern breakings of the lambent glare, her vision caught a hurry of driving plains and cloudy mountains and wide tawny streams and cities climbed in minarets and towers towards an unavailing changeless sky. Long keys and ghats and harbors white with sails challenged her sight a while and then were gone. Amidst them travailed toiling multitudes in ever-shifting perishable groups, a foiled cinema of lit shadowy shapes enveloped in the grey mantle of a dream. Imagining meanings in life's heavy drift, they trusted in the uncertain environment and waited for death to change their spirit scene. The savage din of labor and a tramp of armored life and the monotonous hum of thoughts and acts that ever were the same, as if the dull reiterated drone of a great brute machine beset her soul, a gray dissatisfied Rumor like a ghost of the moaning of a loud, unquiet sea. A huge, inhuman, cyclopean voice, a babel builder's song towering to heaven, a throb of engines and the clang of tools brought the deep undertone of labor's pain. As when pale lightnings tear a tortured sky, high overhead a cloud-rimmed fury flared, chasing like smoke from a red funnel driven the forced creations of an ignorant mind. Drifting she saw, like pictured fragments flee, phantoms of human thought and baffled hope, the shapes of nature and the arts of man, philosophies and disciplines and laws, and the dead spirit of old societies, constructions of the titan and the worm. As if lost remnants of forgotten light, before her mind there fled with trailing wings, dim revelations and delivering words, emptied of their mission and their strength to save the messages of the evangelist gods, voices of prophets, scripts of vanishing creeds, each in its hour eternal claimed went by. Ideals, systems, sciences, poems, crafts, tireless their perished and again recurred thought restlessly by some creative power. But all were dreams, 
rushing and empty vast. Ascetic voices called of lonely spheres on mountain summits or by river banks or from the desolate heart of forest glades seeking heaven's rest for the spirit's worldless peace or in bodies motionless like statues fixed in trance cessation of their sleepless thought sat sleeping souls and this too was a dream all things the past has made and slain were there its lost forgotten forms that once had lived and all the present loves as new revealed and all the hopes the future brings had failed already caught and spent in effort vain repeated fruitlessly age after age unwearied all return insisting still because of joy in the anguish of pursuit and joy to labor and to win and lose and joy to create and keep and joy to kill the rolling cycles passed and came again brought the same toils and the same barren end forms ever new and ever old the long appalling revolutions of the world once more arose the great destroying voice across the fruitless labor of the world his huge denials all defeating might pursued the ignorant march of dolorous time behold the figures of this symbol realm its solid outlines of creative dream inspiring the great concrete tasks of earth in its motion parable of human life here thou can trace the outcome nature gives to the sin of being and the error in things and the desire that compels to live and man's incurable malady of hope in an immutable order hierarchy where nature changes not man cannot change ever he obeys a fixed mutation's law in a new version of our uptold tale in ever wheeling cycles turns the race his mind is spent in circling boundaries for mind is man beyond thought he cannot soar if he could leave his limits he would be safe he sees but cannot mount to his greater heaven even winged he sinks back to his native soil he is a captive in his net of mind and beats soul wings against the walls of life in vain his heart lifts up its yearning prayer the peopling with brilliant gods the formless void then disappointed to the void he turns and in its happy nothingness asks release the calm nirvana of his dream of self the word in silence ends in not the name the part amid the mortal multitude he calls the godhead incommunicable to be the lover of his lonely soul or cast his spirit into its void embrace or he finds his copy in the impartial all he imparts to the immobile his own will attributes to the eternal rock and love and to the ineffable lends a thousand names hope not to call god down into his life how shall thou bring the everlasting here there is no house for him in hurrying time vainly thou seeks in matter's world and aim no aim is there 
only a will to be. All walk by nature bound forever the same. Look on these forms that stay a while and pass, these lives that long and strive, then are no more, these structures that have no abiding truth, the saviour creeds that cannot save themselves, but perish in the strangling hands of the years, discarded from man's thought, proved false by time, philosophies that strip all problems bear, but nothing ever have solved since earth began, and sciences omnipotent in vain, by which men learn of what the suns are made, transform all forms to serve their outward needs, ride through the sky and sail beneath the sea, but learn not what they are or why they came. These polities, architectures of man's brain, that bricked with evil and good, wall in man's spirit, and fissured houses, palace at once and jail, rot while they reign, and crumble before they crash. These revolutions, demon or drunken god, convulsing the wounded body of mankind, only to paint in new colours an old face. These wars, carnage triumphant, ruin gone mad, the work of centuries vanishing in an hour, the blood of the vanquished and the victor's crown, which men to be born must pay for with their pain, the hero's face divine on satyr's limbs, the demon's grandeur mixed with the demigods, the glory and the beasthood and the shame. Why is it all the labor and the din, the transient joys, the timeless sea of tears, the longing and the hoping and the cry, the battle and the victory and the fall, the aimless journey that can never pause, the waking toil, the incoherent sleep, song, shouts and weeping, wisdom and idle words, the laughter of men, the irony of the gods. Where leads the march? Whither the pilgrimage? Who keeps the map of the route or planned each stage? Or else self-moved, the world walks its own way. Or nothing is there, but only a mind that dreams. The world is a myth that happened to come true, a legend told to itself by conscious mind, imaged and played on a faint matter's ground, on which it stands in an unsubstantial war. Mind is the author, spectator, actor, stage, Mind only is, and what it thinks is seen. If mind is all, renounce the hope of bliss. If mind is all, renounce the hope of truth. For mind can never touch the body of truth, and mind can never see the soul of God. Only his shadow it grasps, nor hears his laugh, as it turns from him to the vain seeming of things. Mind is a tissue woven of light and shade, where right and wrong have sown their mingled parts. Or mind is nature's marriage of covenant between truth and falsehood, between joy and pain. This struggling pair no court can separate. Each thought is a gold coin with bright alloy, and error and truth are its obverse and reverse. And this is the imperial mintage of the brain, and of this kind is all its currency. Think not to plant on earth the living truth, or make of matter's world the home of God. Truth comes not there, but only the thought of truth. God is not there, 
but only the name of God. If the self there is, it is bodiless and unborn. It is no one and it is possessed by none. On what shall thou then build thy happy world? Cast off thy life and mine, then art thou self. An all-seeing, omnipresent, stark alone. If God there is, he cares not for the world. All things he sees with calm, indifferent gaze. He has doomed all hearts to sorrow and desire. He has bound all life with his implacable laws. He answers not the ignorant voice of prayer. Eternal while the ages toil beneath, unmoved, untouched by aught that he has made, he sees as minute details mid the stars the animal's agony and the fate of man. Immeasurably wise, he exceeds thy thought. His solitary joy needs not thy love. His truth in human thinking cannot dwell. If thou desirest truth, then still thy mind, forever slain by the dumb, unseen light. Immortal bliss lives not in human air. How shall the mighty mother her calm delight keep fragrant in this narrow, fragile vase, or lodge her sweet, unbroken ecstasy in hearts which earthly sorrow can assail, and bodies careless death can slay at will. Dream not to change the world that God has planned. Strive not to alter His eternal law. If heavens there are whose gates are shut to grief, there seek the joy thou could not find on earth. Or in the imperishable hemisphere, where light is native and delight is king, and spirit is the deathless ground of things, choose thy high station, child of eternity. If thou art spirit, and nature is thy robe, cast off thy garb, and be thy naked self, immutable in its undying truth. Alone forever, in the mute alone. Turn then to God, for Him leave all behind. Forgetting love, forgetting Satyavan, annul thyself in His immobile peace. O soul, drown in a still beatitude, for thou must die to thyself to reach God's height. I, death, am the gate of immortality. But Savitri answer to the sophist God, Once more will thou call light to blind truth eyes, make knowledge a catch of the snare of ignorance, and the word a dart to slay my living soul. Offer, O King, thy boons to tired spirits, and hearts that could not bear the wounds of time. Let those who were tied to body and to mind tear off those bonds and flee into white calm, crying for a refuge from the play of God. Surely thy boons are great since thou art he. But how shall I seek rest in endless peace who house the mighty mother's violent force, her vision turned to read the enigmaed world, her will tempered in the blaze of wisdom's sun and the flaming silence of her heart of love. The world is a spiritual paradox invented by a need in the unseen, a poor translation to the creature's sense of that which forever exceeds idea and speech, a symbol what can never be symbolized, a language mispronounced, misspelt yet true. Its powers have come from the eternal heights and plunged into the inconscient dim abyss and risen from it to do their marvelous work. 
The soul is a figure of the unmanifest. The mind labors to think the unthinkable. The life to call the mortal into birth. The body to enshrine the illimitable. The world is not cut off from truth and God. In vain thou hast dug the dark, unbridgeable gulf. In vain thou hast built the blind and doorless wall. Man's soul crosses to thee to paradise. Heaven's sun forces its way to death and night. Its light is seen upon a being's word. My mind is a torch lit from the eternal sun. My life a breath drawn by the mortal guest. My mortal body is the eternal house. Already the torch becomes the undying ray. Already the life is the immortal force. The house grows of the householder part in one. How sayest thou truth can never light the human mind and bliss can never invade the mortal's heart or God descend into the world he made? If in the meaningless void creation rose if from a bodiless force matter was born, if life could climb in the unconscious tree, its green delight break into emerald leaves and its laughter of beauty blossom in the flower, if sense could wake in tissue, nerve and cell and thought seize the grey matter of the brain and soul peep from its secrecy through the flesh, how shall the nameless light not leap on men and unknown powers emerge from nature's sleep? Even now, hints of a luminous truth like stars arise in the mind moon, splendor of ignorance. Even now, the deathless lovers touch we feel. If the chamber's door is even a little ajar, what then can hinder God from stealing in? Or who forbid his kiss on the sleeping soul? Already God is near, the truth is closed. Because the dark atheist body knows him not, must the sage deny the light, the seer his soul? I am not bound by thought or sense or shape. I live in the glory of the infinite. I am near to the nameless and unknowable. The ineffable is now my household mate. But standing on eternity's luminous brink, I have discovered that the world was he. I have met spirit with spirit, self with self, but I have loved too the body of my God. I have pursued him in his earthly form. A lonely freedom cannot satisfy a heart that has grown one with every heart. I am a deputy of the aspiring world. My spirit's liberty I ask for all. Then rang again a deeper cry of death. As if beneath its weight of sterile law, Oppressed by its own obstinate, meaningless will, disdainful, weary, and compassionate, it kept no more its old intolerant sound, but seemed like life in her unnumbered path, toiling forever and achieving naught because of birth and change, her mortal powers by which she lasts around the term post fixed turning of a white circling aimless race whose course forever speeds and is the same. In its long play with fate and chance and time, assured of the game's vanity lost or won, crushed by its load of ignorance and doubt, which knowledge seems to increase and growth to enlarge, the earth mind sinks and it despairs and looks 
old, weary, and discouraged on its work. Yet was all nothing then or vainly achieved. Some great thing has been done, some light, some power, delivered from the huge inconscience grasp. It has emerged from night, it sees its dawn, circling forever, though no dawn can stay. This change was in the goddess far-flung white. His form of dread was altered and admitted a transient effort at eternity, yet flung vast doubts of what might else have been on grandiose hints of an impossible day. The great voice surging cried to Savitri, Because thou knowest the wisdom that transcends both veil of forms and the contempt of forms, arise, delivered by the seeing God. If thee thou hast kept thy mind from life's fears death, thou mightst have been like them, omniscient calm. But the violent and passionate heart forbid. It is the storm bird of an anarch power that would upheave the world and tear from it the indecipherable scroll of faith, death's rule and law and the unknowable will. Hasteners to action, violators of God, are these great spirits who have too much love, and they who form like thee, for both are thou, have come into the narrow bounds of life with two large natures overleaping time. Worshippers of force who know not her recoil, their giant wills, Compel the troubled years. The, the wise are tranquil. Silence the great hills. Rise ceaselessly towards their unreached sky. Seated on their unchanging base. Their heads beamless in heaven's immutable domain. On their aspiring tops. Sublime and still. Lifting halfway to heaven. The climbing soul. The mighty mediator stand content to watch the revolutions of the star, motionlessly moving with the might of earth. They see the ages pass and are the same. The wise think with the cycles, they hear the tread of far off things. Patient, unmoved, they keep their dangerous wisdom in their depths restrained lest man's frail days into the unknown should sink, backed like a ship by bound leviathan into the abyss of his stupendous sea. Lo, how he shakes when the god sets too near, all moves is in peril, anguish torn upheaved, the hurrying eons would tumble on too swift, if sent from heaven, surprised in perfect earth and veilless knowledge, mote these unfit souls. The deities have screened their dreadful power. God hides his thoughts, and even he seems to err. Be still and tardy in the slow, wise world. Mighty art thou with the dread goddess filled to whom thou Christ at dawn in the dim wood. Use not thy strength like the wild titan souls. Touch not the seated lines, the ancient laws. Respect the calm of great established things. But Savitri replied to the huge god, What is the calm thou wants, O law, O death? Is it not the dull vision spread in earth of monstrous energies chained in a stark round, soulless and stone-eyed with mechanic dreams? Vain the soul's hope if changeless law is all. Ever to the new and the unknown press on the speeding eons, 
justifying God. What were earth's ages if the grey restraint were never broken and glories sprang not forth, bursting their obscure seed while man's slow life leaped hurried into sudden splendid path by divine words and human gods revealed? Impose not upon sentient minds and hearts the dull fixity that binds inanimate things. Well is the unconscious rule for the animal breed, content to live beneath the mutable yoke. Man turns to a nobler walk, a master path. I trample on thy law with living feet. For to arise in freedom I was born. If I am mighty, let my force be unveiled, equal companion of the dateless powers, or else let my frustrated soul sink down, unworthy of Godhead in the original sleep. I claim from time my will's eternity, God from his moment. Death replied to her, Why should the noble and immortal will stoop to the petty works of transient earth, freedom forgotten and the eternal path? Or is this the high use of strength and thought to struggle with the bonds of death and time and spend the labor that might earn the gods and battle and bear agony of wounds to grasp the trivial joys that earth can guard in her small treasure chest of passing things. Child, hast thou trodden the gods beneath thy feet only to win poor shreds of earthly life for him thou lovest, cancelling the grand release, keeping from early rapture of the heavens his soul the lenient deities have called. Are thy arms sweeter than the courts of God? He answered, Straight I trample on the road, the strong hands huge for me which plunder path. I run where his sweet dreadful voice commands, and I am driven by the reins of God. Why drew he wide his scheme of mighty worlds, or filled infinity with his passionate breath? Or wherefore did he build my mortal form and sow in me his bright and proud desires, if not to achieve, to flower in me, to love, carving his human image richly shaped in thoughts and largenesses and golden powers? For heaven can wait, or coming in its calm, Easy the heavens were to build for God. Earth was his difficult matter. Earth the glory gave of the problem and the race and strife. There are the ominous masks, the terrible powers. There it is greatness to create the God. Is not the spirit immortal and absolved, always delivered from the grasp of time? Why came he down into the mortal space? Charge he gave to his high spirit in man and wrote a hidden decree on nature's top. Freedom is this with ever seated soul, large in life's limits, strong in matters not, building great stuff of action from the world to make fine wisdom from coarse scattered strands and love and beauty out of war and night, the wager wonderful, the game divine. What liberty has the soul which feels not free, unless stripped bare and cannot kiss the bonds, the lover winds around his playmate's limbs, choosing his tyranny, crushed in his embrace, to seize him better, with her boundless heart, she accepts the limiting circle of his arms, bows full of bliss, 
beneath his mastering hands and laughed in his rich constraints, most bound, most free. This is my answer to thy lures, O death. Immutable death's denial met her cry. However mighty, whatever thy secret name, uttered in hidden conclave of the gods, thy heart's ephemeral passion cannot break the iron rampart of accomplished things with which the great gods fence their camp in space. Whoever thou art behind thy human mask, even if thou art the mother of the world, and sex thy claim upon the realms of chance, the cosmic law is greater than thy will. Even God himself obeys the laws he made. The law abides and never can it change. The person is a bubble on time's sea. The forerunner of a greater truth to come, thy soul creator of its freer law, wanting a force behind on which it leans, the light above which none but thou hast seen, thou claims the first fruit of truth's victory. But what is truth and who can find her form amid the specious Images of sense amid the crowding guesses of the mind and the dark ambiguities of a world people with the incertitudes of thought. For where is truth and when was her footfall heard amid the endless clamor of time's mark? And which is her voice amid the thousand cries that cross the listening brain and feed the soul? Or is truth aught but a high starry name, or a vague and splendid word by which man's thought sanctions and consecrates his nature's choice, the heart's wish donning knowledge as its robe, the cherished idea elect among the next, thought favorite mid the children of half light, who high voiced crowd the playgrounds of the mind or people with dormitories in infant sleep. All things hang here between God's yes and no, two powers real but to each other untrue, two consort stars in the mooned night of mind that towards two opposite horizons gaze, the white head and black tail of the mystic drake, the swift and the lame foot, wing strong, wing broken, sustaining the body of the uncertain world, a great surreal dragon in the sky. Too dangerously thy high proud truth must live, entangled in matter's mortal littleness. All in this world is true, yet all is false. Its thoughts into an eternal cipher run. Its deeds dwell to times rounded zero sum. Thus man at once is animal and God, a disparate enigma of God's make, unable to free the Godhead form within, a being less than himself, yet something more, the aspiring animal, the frustrate God, Yet neither beast nor deity but man, but man tight to the kind of labor strives to exceed, climbing the stairs of God to higher things. Objects are seeming and none knows their truth. Ideas are guesses of an ignorant God. Truth has no home in earth's irrational breast. Yet without reason, life is a tangle of dreams. But reason is poised above a dim abyss and stands at last upon a plank of doubt. Eternal truth lives not with mortal men, or if she dwells within thy mortal heart, 
Show me the body of the living truth, or draw for me the outline of her face, that I too may obey and worship her. Then will I give thee back thy Satyavan, but here are only facts and steel-bound law. This truth I know, that Satyavan is dead, and even thy sweetness cannot lure him back. No magic truth can bring the death to life. No power of earth cancel the thing once done. No joy of the heart can last surviving death. No bliss persuade the past to live again. Life alone can solace the mute void and fill with thought the emptiness of time. Leave then thy dead, O Savitri, and live. The woman answered to the mighty shade, and as she spoke, mortality disappeared. Her goddess self grew visible in her eyes. Light came, a dream of heaven, into her face. O death, thou too art God, and yet not he, but only his own black shadow on his path. As leaving the night, he takes the upward way, and drags with him its flinging inconscient force. Of God unconscious, thou art the dark head, of his ignorance thou art the impenitent sign, of its vast tenebrous womb the natural child, on his immortality the sinister bar. All contraries are aspects of God's face. The many are the innumerable one. The one carries the multitude in his breast. He is the impersonal, inscrutable soul. He is the one infinite person seeing his world. The silence bears the eternal's great dumb seal. His light inspires the eternal world. He is the immobile's deep and deathless hush, its white and signless blank, negating calm. Yet tends the Creator's self, the Almighty Lord, and watches his will done by the forms of God, and the desire that goes half conscious man, and the reluctant and unseen night. These wide divine extremes, these inverse powers are the right and left side of the body of God. Existence balanced twixt two mighty arms confronts the mind with unsolved abysms of thought. Darkness below is fathomless light above. In light are joined but sundered by severing mind, stand face to face. Opposite, inseparable, two contraries needed for his great world task, two poles whose currents wake the men's world fall. In the stupendous secrecy of his self, above the world, brooding with equal wings, he is both in one, beginningless without end, transcending both. He enters the absolute. His being is a mystery beyond mind. His ways bewilder mortal ignorance. The finite in its little section sparked, amazed, credits not God's audacity, who dares to be the unimagined all and see and act as might one infinite. Against human reason, this is his offense, being known to be forever unknowable, to be all and yet transcend the mystic whole, absolute to lodge in a relative world of time, eternal and all-knowing to suffer birth, omnipotent to sport with charms and faith, spirit yet to be matter and the void, Illimitable beyond form or name, to dwell 
within a body one and supreme to be animal and human and divine a still deep sea he laughs in rolling waves universal he is all transcendent none the man's righteousness this is his cosmic crime almighty beyond good and evil to dwell leaving the good to their fate in a wicked world and evil to reign in this enormous scheme all opposition seems and strife and charm and aimless labor with but scanty sense to eyes that see a path and miss the whole the surface men scan the depth refuse their search a hybrid mystery challenges the view or a discouraging sordid miracle yet in the exact inconscient stark conceit in the casual error of the world's ignorance a plan a hidden intelligence is glimpsed there is a purpose in each tumble and fall nature's most careless lolling is a pose preparing some forward step some deep result ingenious note plugged into a motive score these million discords dot the harmonious theme of the evolution's huge orchestral dance a truth supreme has forced the world to be it has wrapped itself in matter as in a shroud a shroud of death a shroud of ignorance it compels the sun to burn through silent space flame signs of its uncomprehended thought in a wide brooding ether formless view it made of knowledge a veiled and struggling light of being a substance nation dense and dumb of bliss the beauty of an insentient world in finite things the conscious infinite dwells involved it sleeps in matter's helpless trance it rules the world from its sleeping senseless void dreaming it throws out mind and heart and soul to labor crippled bound on the hard earth a broken hole it works through scattered points it is gleaming shards of wisdom's diamond thought it shadowy reflects our ignorance it starts from the mute mass in countless depths it fashions a being out of brain and nerve a sentient creature from its pleasures and pangs a pack of feelings of pure a dot of sense survives a while answering the shocks of life then crushed or its force sent leaves the dead form leaves the huge universe in which it lived an insignificant unconsidered guest that the soul grows concealed within its house it gives to the body its strength and magnificence it follows aims in an ignorant aimless world it lends significance to earth's meaningless life a demigod animal came thinking man he wallows in mud yet heavenward soars in thought he plays and ponders laughs and weeps and dreams satisfies his little longings like the beast he pours upon life's book with student eyes out of this tangle of intellect and sense out of the narrow scope of finite thought at last he wakes into spiritual mind a high liberty begins and luminous room he glimpses eternity such is the infinite he meets the gods in great and sudden all he feels the universe as his larger self 
make space and time his opportunity to join the heights and depths of being in life. In the heart's cave, speak secretly with God. But these are touchy and high moments lived. Fragments of truth supreme have lit his soul. Reflections of the sun in waters still. A few have dared the last supreme ascent and break through borders of blinding light above and feel a breath around of mightier air, receive a vaster being's messages and bathe in its immense intuitive ray. On summit mind are radiant altitudes exposed to the luster of infinity, outskirts and dependencies of the house of truth, upraised estates of mind and measureless. There man can visit, but there he cannot live. A cosmic force spreads out its vastitude. Its smallest parts are here philosophies challenging with their detailed immensity, each figuring an omniscient scheme of things. But fire still can climb the ascending light. There are vasts of vision and eternal sun, oceans of an immortal luminousness, flame hills assaulting heaven with their peaks. Their dwelling all becomes a blaze of sight, a burning head of vision leads the mind, thought trails behind it, its long comet tail, the heart glows and illuminates and fear and sense is kindled into identity. A highest flight climbs to a deepest view, in a wide opening of its native sky, Intuition's lightnings range in a bright pack, hunting all hidden truths out of their lairs. Its fiery edge of seeing absolute cleaves into locked, unknown retreats of self, rummages the sky recesses of the brain, lights up the occult chambers of the heart. Its spear points ictus of discovery, Pressed on the cover of name, the screen of form, strips bare the secret soul of all that is. Hot there has revelation sunbright eyes, the word a mighty and inspiring voice, enters truth's inmost cabin of privacy and tears away the veil from God and light. Then stretches the boundless, finite, lost expanse, the cosmic empire of the overmind, time's buffer state, bordering eternity, too vast for the experience of man's soul. All here gathers beneath one golden sky, the powers that build the cosmos station take in its house of infinite possibility. Each god from there builds his own nature's world. Ideas are phalanxed like a group of suns, caught crowds in masses, seized by one regard. All time is one body, face a single look. There is the goddess, universal gaze and there the boundaries of immortal mind. The line that parts and joins the hemispheres closes in on the labor of the gods, fencing eternity from the toil of time. In a glorious kingdom of eternal light, all ruler ruled by none, the truth supreme, omnipotent, omniscient and alone, in a golden country keeps her measureless house. In its corridor she hears the tread that comes, 
out of the unmanifest, never to return, till the unknown is known and seen by men. Above the stretch and blaze of cosmic sight, above the silence of the wordless thought, form the creator of immortal forms, nameless, investitured with the name divine, transcending time's hours, transcending timelessness, the mighty mother sits in lucent calm and holds the eternal child upon her knees, attending the day when he shall seek to pay. There is the image of our future hope. There is the sun for which all darkness waits. There is imperishable harmony. The world's contradictions climb to her and are one. There is the truth of which the world's truths are spread, the light of which the world's ignorance is the shade. Still truth draws back the shade that it has cast. The love of our hearts call down to heal all strife, the bliss for which the world's derelict sorrows yearn. Thence comes the glory sometimes seen on earth, the visits of Godhead to the human soul, the beauty and the dream on nature's face. There the perfection born from eternity calls to it the perfection born in time, the truth of God surprising human life, the image of God overtaking finite day. There, in a world of everlasting light, in the realms of the immortal supermind, truth who hides here her head in mystery, her riddles deemed by reason impossible, in the stark structure of material form, an enigma lives, unmasked her face, and there is nature and the common law of things. There in a body made of spirit stuff, the hearthstone of the ever-living fire, action translates the movements of the soul, thought steps infallible and absolute, and life is a continual worship rite, a sacrifice of rapture to the One. A cosmic vision, a spiritual sense, feels all the infinite lodged in finite form, and seen through a quivering ecstasy of light, discovers the bright face of the bodiless. In the truth of a moment, in the moment soul, can sip the honey wine of eternity. The spirit who is no one and innumerable, the one mystic infinite person of his world, multiplies his myriad personality, on all his bodies feels his divinity stamp, and sits in each immortal and unique. The immobile stands behind each daily act, a background of the movement and the scene, upholding creation on its might and calm, and change on the immutable, deathless poise. The timeless looks out from the travelling hour, the ineffable puts on a robe of speech, where all its words are woven like magic threads, moving with beauty, inspiring with their gleam, and every thought takes up its destined place, recorded in the memory of the world. The truth supreme, vast and impersonal, fits faultlessly the awe and circumstance, its substance a pure gold, ever the same, but shaped into vessels for the spirit's use, its gold becomes the wine jar and the war. All there is a supreme epiphany. The all wonderful makes a marvel of each event. The all beautiful is a miracle in each shape. The all blissful smites with rapture the heart throbs 
a pure celestial joy is the use of sense. Each being there is a member of the self, a portion of the million-thoughted all, clement to the timeless unity, the many sweetness, the joy of difference, edged with the intimacy of the one. But who can show to thee truth's glorious face? Our human words can only shadow her. To thought she is an unthinkable rapture of life, to speech a marvel inexpressible. O oh, death, if thou couldst touch the truth supreme, thou wouldst grow suddenly wise and cease to be. If our souls could see and love and clasp God's truth, its infinite radiance would seize our hearts. Our being in God's image is made, and earthly life become the life divine. Then death, the last time, answered Savitri, If truth supreme transcends her shadow here, severed by knowledge and the climbing vast, what bridge can cross the gulf that she has left between her and the dream world she has made? Or who could hope to bring her down to men and persuade to tread the harsh globe with wounded feet, leaving her unapproachable glory and bliss, wasting her splendor on pale earthly air? Is thine that strength, O beauty of mortal limbs, O soul who fluttereth to escape my death? Who then art thou, hiding in human guise? Thy voice carries the sound of infinity. Knowledge is with thee. Truth speaks through thy words. The light of things beyond shines in thy eyes. But where is thy strength to conquer time and death? Hast thou God's force to build heaven's values here? For truth and knowledge are an idle dream. If knowledge brings not power to change the world, if might comes not to give to truth her right. A blind force not truth has made this ignorant world. A blind force not truth orders the lives of men. By power not light the great gods rule the world. Power is the arm of God, the seal of faith. O human, clement to immortality, reveal thy power, lay bare thy spirit's force, then will I give back to thee Satyavan. Or if the mighty mother is with thee, show me her face that I may worship her. Let deathless eyes look into the eyes of death, an imperishable force touching brute things transform earth's death into immortal life. Then can thy dead return to thee and live. The prostrate earth perhaps shall lift her gaze and feel near her the secret body of God and love and joy overtake fleeing time. And Savitri looked on death and answered not. Almost it seemed as if in his symbol shape the world's darkness had consented to heaven light, and God needed no more the inconscient scream. A mighty transformation came on her, a halo of the indwelling deity, the mortal luster that had lit her face and scented its radiance in her body's house, overflowing made the air a luminous sea. In a flaming moment of apocalypse, the incarnation thrust aside its veil. A little figure in infinity, yet stood and seemed the eternal very house, as if the world's center was a very soul, and all white space was but its outer robe. A curve of the calm hauteur of far heaven, Descending into earth's humility, her forehead span 
Volte Domnitians gaze, her eyes were two stars that watched the universe. The power that from her being's summit reigned, the presence chambered in lotus secrecy, came down and held the center in her brow, where the mind's lord in his control room sits, there throned on concentration's native seat, he opens that third mysterious eye in man, the unseen's eye that looks at the unseen, when light with a golden ecstasy fills his brain, and the eternal's wisdom drives his choice, and eternal will seizes the mortal's will. It stirred in the lotus of her throat of song, and in her speech throbbed the mortal word. Her life sounded with the steps of the world's soul, moving in harmony with the cosmic thought. As glides God's son into the mystic cave, where hides his light from the pursuing gods, it glided into the lotus of her heart and woke in it the force that alters fate. It poured into a navel's lotus depth, lost in the little life nature's narrow home, on the body's longings grew heaven raptures flower, and made desire a pure celestial flame broke into the cave where coiled world energy sleep and smote the thousand hooded serpent force that blazing towered and clasped the world self about joined matter's dumbness to the spirit hush and filled earth's act with the spirit's silent power thus changed she waited for the word to speak Eternity looked into the eyes of death, and darkness saw God's living reality. Then a voice was heard that seemed the stillness self, or the low calm utterance of infinity, when it speaks to the silence in the heart of sleep. I hail thee, almighty and victorious death, thou grandiose darkness of the infinite. O void that makest room for all to be, hunger that gnawest at the universe, consuming the cold remnants of the suns, and eat the whole world with thy jaws of fire, waster of the energy that has made the stars, in conscience carrier of the seeds of thought, nations in which all knowledge sleeps entombed, and slowly emerges in its hollow breast, wearing the mind's mask of bright ignorance. Thou art my shadow and my instrument. I have given thee thy awful shape of dread, and thy sharp sword of terror and grief and pain, to force the soul of man to struggle for life on the brevity of his half-conscious day. Live death a while, be still my instrument. One day man too shall know thy fathomless heart of silence and the brooding peace of night and grave obedience to eternal law and the calm inflexible pity in thy day. But now, O timeless mightiness, stand aside and leave the path of my incarnate fall. Relieve the radiant God from thy black mask. Relieve the soul of the world called Satyavan, freed from thy clutch of pain and ignorance, that he may stand master of life and faith, man's representative in the house of God, the mate of wisdom and the spouse of life, the eternal bridegroom of the eternal bride. He spoke, that unconvinced resisted still, although he knew, refusing still to know, although he saw, refusing still to see. Unshakable he stood, claiming his right, his spirit bowed, his will obeyed the law of its own nature, 
binding even on God. The two oppose each other face to face. Is his being like a huge fort of darkness towered? Around it her light grew, an ocean sea. A while the shade survived, defying heaven, assailing in front, oppressing from above, a concrete mass of conscious power, he bore the tyranny of her divine desire. A pressure of intolerable force weighed on his unbowed head and stubborn breast. Light like a burning tongue licked up his thoughts. Light was a luminous torture in his heart. Light caused a splendid agony through his nerves. His darkness muttered, perishing in her blaze. Her mastering words commanded every limb and left no room for his enormous will that seemed pushed out into some helpless space and could no more re-enter but left him void. He called to night, but she fell shuddering back. He called to hell, but sullenly it retired. He turned to the inconscient for support from which he was born, his vast sustaining self. It drew him back towards boundless vacancy, as if by himself to swallow up himself. He called to his strength, but it refused his call. His body was eaten by light, his spirit devoured. At last he knew defeat, inevitable, and left crumbling the shape that he had worn, abandoning hope to make man's soul his prey, and forced to be mortal, the immortal spirit. Afar he fled, cunning her dreaded touch, and refuge took in the retreating night. In the dream twilight of that symbol world, the dire universal shadow disappeared, vanishing into the void from which it came. As if deprived of its original course, the twilight realm passed fading from their souls, and Satyavan and Savitri were alone. But neither stirred between those figures rose a mute, invisible and translucent wall. In the long blank moment's pause, nothing could move. All waited on the unknown, inscrutable will.